Welcome everyone to our class today, an introduction to Sanborn Fire Insurance Maps. This class is presented by Muncie Public Library. My name is Sarah McKinley and I'm the local history and genealogy supervisor of Muncie Public Library, as well as the manager of our Carnegie Library branch in downtown Muncie. Uh, for those who aren't familiar, the local history and genealogy collections at MPL focus primarily on the history of Muncie and Delaware County and include vital records and indexes, court records, uh, land records, city directories, cemetery indexes, funeral home records, city and county histories, as well as family histories, school yearbooks, photographs, diaries, newspapers, and other special collections. Uh, they also include maps, such as copies of the Sanborn maps that we will be working with today. So just to give you a quick overview of how this class will be structured, uh, we'll first go over an introductory and instruction session in which we'll cover what Sanborn fire insurance maps are and why they were created, how to read a Sanborn map, how Sanborn maps can be applied to research, where you can gain access to Sanborn maps, and how to use the very useful Muncie Sanborn map locator tool. Then we'll move on to an interactive exercise in which you'll actually get a chance to practice using the locator tool to research a real property here in Muncie. This is a great opportunity to understand firsthand how to read and interpret a Sanborn map and trace a property through multiple years. So even if you aren't researching a property in Muncie in the future, you'll be able to apply this experience to future research. And finally, we'll conclude with a brief Q&A and discussion where you'll have an opportunity, if you wish, to share how the exercise went and what interesting things you may have discovered. So what are Sanborn fire insurance maps? Sanborn maps um, are lithographed street plans published by the Sanborn Map Company, which was founded in 1867. They were created with the purpose of assisting fire insurance agents evaluate the liability and potential hazards associated with the property. They did this by looking at what materials the buildings were made from, whether they had sprinkler systems, their proximity to other buildings, their proximity to fire hydrants, uh, water pipes and gas lines and so on. The final maps were produced in 1977 as they had by then replaced um, the maps with more modern means of making these types of evaluations. But Indiana maps in particular were produced between 1883 and 1966. Uh, what's unique about these maps compared to other types of maps is that they are made uh, at a very accurate scale. Um, the scale is one inch equals 50 feet. They show the size, shape, and construction of buildings, including building materials such as wood, brick, stone, or adobe. Uh, as well as show property boundaries, street names, house and block numbers, the purpose of the buildings and, their, and who occupied those buildings. They also identified if they were dwellings, if they were churches, offices, or specific types of businesses, such as furniture stores or groceries, libraries, and so on. And of course, they provided information on um, things that were relevant for fire control, since that was their purpose. So this is a Sanborn map. The image on the left shows a Sanborn map page of a particular neighborhood. On the right, I've zoomed into a small section of the map and you can see each of these pink or yellowish orange uh, colored shapes represent a building. You're looking basically straight down on top of each building and seeing an accurate representation of that building's footprint. The larger rectangular outlines around the buildings are the property boundaries. But what are all of those dots and numbers and other symbols? Well, let's take a look um, at how to read a Sanborn map. We won't go over everything today, but we'll cover some basics. So every Sanborn map is divided into multiple pages. You begin each set of a Sanborn map with a map key, which may look something like this. It's often the first sheet in a, a Sanborn map set. On the right, you can see you may have an index of important names and businesses, while on the left, we have our map key. This is an overall map of the city or town, and each of the colored squares is an individual map in the set. So I've outlined the um, sort of yellowish square there, 
and it has a number four on it, which means if the property that I'm looking for falls within those street boundaries that are covered by the area highlighted as number four, then I know I need to find sheet four of that um, 1887 set of maps. So that's what this is representing here. Uh, we have our, um, our map key on the left showing sheet number four. And then I've zoomed in on the right here. This is sheet number four of the 1887 map for the city of Muncie, Indiana, which covers about a 12 block uh, city section in downtown Muncie. The other key that you'll want to look for may also appear on sheet number one is the key that shows all of the colors and symbols on the map. They don't always include this many symbols, um, but the key will tell you how to determine what building materials were used, where windows were located, and whether those windows had shutters, um, details about the roof's construction, if there was an elevator, a stable, a garage, a chimney, and so on. So let's look at a city block. Um, the bold number in the center of this city block tells me that this is block number five. The bold names around the block are the street names. So this block is bound by East Jackson, South Elm, East Adams, and South Madison. Sometimes the directions aren't included, uh, but they are on this map. The two smaller numbers in the street and in the alley tell me that the street is 50 feet wide and the alley is 10 feet wide. So again, we have um, our accurate measurements and scale here. The series of numbers on the outer edge of the property boundaries are the house numbers or address numbers. So at the top, for example, uh, we have 409 East Jackson, 411 East Jackson, 415 East Jackson, and so on. So these will help you identify the location of the specific property you're looking for, and when compared to maps, maps from other years can help you identify a change in address, which we will see during my demonstration today. If you see a letter D or sometimes uh, the letters DWG on a building, this indicates that it's a dwelling, it's a, it's a house. Um, looking at the blue arrow, on the right, the small number one and number two in the corners indicate how many stories those sections of building were. So a single story and a two story section. The colors of each building indicate the type of material of the structure. So the yellow buildings are wood frame structures and the pink ones are made of brick. Sometimes you'll see blue for stone or green for adobe or some combination if there's mixed materials involved. Looking at the red arrows on this map, some of the buildings are labeled with their purpose or who occupied the buildings. Uh, in this case, we specifically see the Church of Christ and the Colonial Flats are labeled. And less specifically, we have a couple of garages and an office that are identified. Under the blue arrow, we have a structure with an X through it. This indicates that it is a stable. And since this has a section with a two on it, that means it is a two-storied stable. And you can find many more feature explanations by looking at the key of the map symbols. <clears throat> so why are sandboard maps useful for research? Well, sandboard maps are dependable, highly detailed maps that show you how an area developed and changed in the built environment. So as you look at maps from different years, you can see how and where buildings appear, disappear, or change. They can also be used to study historic migration patterns. So you can see the expansion of different areas of the city. So if a city becomes industrialized, for example, you may start seeing more dwellings appearing for the workforce as more people migrate to a certain area for employment. Or after a university is constructed, you may see more areas developing around the university. Sandborn maps can help you determine dates of construction. If you find the earliest map that the building appears on, this helps narrow down a time period for construction. You can identify changes in address, which is something, as I mentioned, we'll see in my demo. Uh, the maps show us what building materials were used, as we saw earlier, and any alterations or additions made to buildings. So they're great for researching the history of a house or a business. They can also help us identify entities that owned property and help us with genealogy research in relation to our ancestors, places of residence or of work. 
We can then compare and combine what we find in Sanborn maps to other resources, such as city directories, newspapers, county histories, diaries, photographs, vital records, and so on to get a more complete picture of our research subject. For example, I won't go through the entire story here, but I did conduct a case study once for a house history program that I taught. The case study was on the address 424 West Main Street in Muncie, which is at the corner of Cherry and Main. Uh, this was an apartment building that was formerly a doctor's office built on the site of a former residence. You can find some information on the property address um, and the tax description of the property on the Beacon GIS website, and you can find a, a top-down view of the, um, the building on Google Maps, uh, which I have in the center here. So looking at Sanborn maps, we can see on the, the map on the right, the pink property matches our, the shape of our Google map building. Uh, so we know that this is the same property. It's a brick, brick structure um, because it's pink and it is labeled as apartments. Um, on the left, we see an earlier map that the property once contained a wood frame dwelling on that site. So there was a former structure on that same site at the corner of Maine and Cherry. And looking at the land transfer records on the top right, it's hard to see, but basically it shows that there was a substantial improvement made to the property. And this was um, the expense of changing from a wood frame structure to constructing a, a brick building. So between the dates of the Sanborn maps and the dates from the transfer records, we have a pretty good idea of when the second building was constructed. And then we have many more pieces to the puzzle that I was able to fill in through city directories, deed records, vital records, cemetery records, census records, county histories, and obituaries, which contained biographies of some of the previous homeowners, newspaper articles, which gave me a description of the um, apartment building actually when it was constructed. It actually told us what rooms were in that building, what they were used for and who the occupants were. So Sanborn maps are often just one piece of a larger puzzle. And as you've seen, they do give us a quite, quite a bit of information that help us visualize, determine or confirm important pieces of information in our research. We know now basically what Sanborn maps are, but where do we find them? Well, historic Sanborn maps are generally found in libraries, archives, and historical societies. The exact location will differ from city to city. However, many Sanborn maps are now digitized and can be found online up through 1924. Copyright prevents them from being published online after that date, so um, then you would have to seek out physical copies. You can find links for many of these on your handout, but the Library of Congress has maps for the United States, Canada, and Mexico. Indiana University has Sanborn maps for Indiana from 1883 to 1966. Ball State University has the more local maps for Muncie, Indiana for the years um, shown here on the slide and on your handout. Uh, notice that there is um, some gaps in this list. Uh, the large gap from 1911 to 1954, if you think about it, it encompasses two world wars and a Great Depression. So there probably wasn't a strong reason to invest money in these maps being produced because they were quite expensive. Um, as we'll see, the maps are online. Uh, though up through 1911. Muncie Public Library has the same maps available on microfilm or CD-ROM for all but the final two years for Muncie. So let's take a look at the Muncie Sanborn Map Locator Tool, which is what we'll be using for the class exercise today. Uh, I'm going to switch over to my browser uh, and we'll navigate to dmr.bsu.edu, which is for Ball State's Digital Media Repository. So I'm going to put that into my browser now. So this uh, digital media repository, I, I like to start here because it's a, an easy URL to remember. Um, so to find the map locator, we need to go to collections. And then we need to click on M because the Muncie um, Sanborn fire insurance maps are located under Muncie for the start of the title. So you'll scroll down here to find Muncie Sanborn Fire Insurance Maps and click that. 
And then um, it will give you a description of the collection. You can technically access all of the Sanborn maps by clicking browse and it will take you to the full collection. However, if you don't want to manually have to find which sheet your property is on um, for each year, you can use the Muncie Sanborn map locator tool. So click the link in the description. And I am going to, um, oh, and when this pops up, uh, this is just telling you basically uh, to search by address um, and then e that each box we'll see on the left represents a different Sanborn map year. So you can click okay to dismiss this message. And I'm going to use the address for 122 East Washington Street in Muncie. This is actually the address of the historic Moore Youse home, which is now owned by the Delaware County Historical Society and is used as a historic house museum. Um, so you can see it automatically went to my um, address point on the map of Muncie. And we have some colored squares here. These squares actually represent the areas that the Sanborn maps covered for different years. And I can see on the left, these are, are shown in different layers. So we have um, different years divided here and each layer um, is a different year and it's represented by a different colored square. So I always recommend turning all of these layers off to start so that you can see um, which years are actually available for that property. Now this property was actually constructed in 1860. It's the oldest house um, still standing in downtown Muncie. So it is actually going to show up on our first Sanborn map in 1883. Um, if your property does not show up, um, you can basically just click on each year until you see a colored square around the dot for your property. And then you know that there is a map. Um, so not all areas are covered by Sanborn maps, um, but uh, this one is. So 1883, I can click on the blue square here and click on, to actually access the Sandbar map, you click on more info. And that will open a new tab that will go directly to the sheet um, that contains that address. And then I can click the arrows here to expand the map. And I can use my mouse wheel to zoom in or out, or I can use the, um, the plus or minus signs on the upper left-hand corner to zoom in or out. So 122 East Washington, that is actually at the corner of Washington and Mulberry. So if I zoom in here, I can see that there is a house here, but look at the address. This is saying 1720. That is not the address that I expected to see. So I'm not quite sure, even though I know that it's this is the right property. Um, if I didn't know that, then I would need to look at some other years here. So I'm gonna close this and go back to our Sanborn map locator. I'm gonna look at the most recent one to sort of get an idea of where I'm at. So 1911, I can click more info and expand our map and look at Washington and Mulberry, um, East Washington. Excuse me, I had to pause that for a moment because I clicked on the wrong map. Um, so we we're at East Washington and North Mulberry. And if I zoom in, I can see 122 East Washington. That is the address that I expected to see. So now I'm going to go back. I can keep this open and I'm going to uncheck mark 1911 and go to 1902. And I can click on the correct map. So we know that's our correct corner. Um, we're going to zoom in here again to East Washington and North Mulberry. Now notice we have 122 East Washington, but to the left, we have some different numbers here. This is a completely different numbering scheme. So they must have been in a transition here. They have 1301 and 1302. They have some other 1300s, but then they have more three digit numbers. So this was a year that that address was evidently in transition or had been recently changed to 122 East Washington. Um, so that's good to know for my research. You know, if I'm looking for something in a city directory or in a newspaper, I need to know what those address changes were. Um, and here we have again, 
East Washington and Mulberry. Still 122, um, but they've indicated in parentheses the other addresses, which um, will likely change. And I can continue to go back. So as you gather your maps, um, you can start to analyze what is around them. Um, and you can also start to see some changes in the construction of your property. So this one is, um, what did I have here, 1892. So we can see some one-story sections, some two-story sections here, and we can see the basic shape of our property. Well, if I look back at this, there's some, there's some changes here. So notice there was um, a section here that is not showing on this map. Um, and we don't have this little uh, shed or, or building here in the back corner, this little one story structure here. Um, and around our building, um, we have some changes here as well. So notice we have the Braun House, uh, which has some offices and um, a, a dining room in this area here. But if we look over here, it's called the Abbott House. Um, still have a dining room. The office over here was listed as a parlor. Uh, we have a stable in the back here, which is now gone and has been replaced with a brick building. So looking at this, we can see a lot of different changes just in between those two maps. So those are the types of things that you'll be looking for in your own research. Um, and we will turn it over now to our exercise. Your exercise actually gives you a um, suggested address to look for in the Sanborn map locator, but feel free to play with it and use your own um, and toggle these maps on and off uh, and um, you know keep those tabs open and look at those different addresses. And then we'll, we will um, give you some time. You'll have 30 minutes to go through and answer some questions about your property and then we'll have a class discussion. So feel free to ask me questions. We can pose them to the group um, and have fun. Thank you.